talk to our next guest, though, and that is Mr. Farmer Brad. What's going on, Brad? Not much. Nice to see you, uh, Morgan. You too. You too. So, so, so Brad, for, for everybody who's watching, tell, tell them who you are, where are you from? Like, what's your deal? So I'm a uh, farmer, Brad, and located in East Central Indiana, and I've been homesteading since uh, 2015 and uh, started off with some chickens that I brought from California, relocated my family, and we have just under eight acres of homestead. Uh, and then I've um, accidentally became a sheep farmer, uh, just more or less uh, to put the sheep to work, uh, keeping the back four acres trimmed and nice. And uh, then uh, I, I have a day job. Um, I'm a web developer. And so I needed a way to optimize the amount of time that it takes to do chores. So I make uh, automatic chicken water buckets in my basement and ship them out all over the United States. And that helps pay for the chicken feed as uh, feed is one of the big costs on the farm. So talk, talk to me a little bit more about that because I, I actually have one of your waterers and it's really cool. Like what, what do the waterers do? Like, what do they look like? Um, so I'm a, uh, after this call, I'm actually going to be making some more, so I don't have any uh, next to me. But uh, they're a two-gallon bucket that has a float valve similar to like what you have in the back of your toilet. Uh, so you hook it up to a garden hose, and it refills automatically. And after some customer feedback in, uh, in uh, 2018, I switched the design a little bit to now where it's kind of like a water platform. And so... It uh, goes from regular garden hose adapter to one fourth inch uh, blue tubing, which is similar to what you use in reverse osmosis systems. The nice thing with that is uh, there's quick connect adapters and you can put it, uh, push it through hardware cloth without having to cut anything. So you can really customize daisy chain your system. Uh, that one that you have up is the uh, heated one. So that has a built-in heater on the bottom. And then I add the uh, float valve and so that's the benefit of during the summer, you can have it automatically refill, but then during the winter time, you plug it in and then manually refill it. Very cool. You know, and, and I, I think this is actually really important for folks who are watching because one of the questions that's come up from folks tonight is like, you know, how can you earn a living? Like, what can you do? And, you know, sometimes you can try to like raise, you know, animals for food or raise crops for food or that sort of thing. And that's one way to earn a living. But other times you can have something like this where you're able to do this right, like, you know, kind of from your house and build these and ship them out and have this business that brings you income. Yeah. And, uh, and one of the big retailers that I drop ship for is a uh, real King. Um, and the process was I contacted real King, sent them a bucket. They gave it a thumbs up and they put it on the website. Um, so that was a way to sort of legitimize my product. Uh, um, Retails are hard to get into, so um, that I felt like was a good first step. Now I'd say since 2015, I've probably have sold over 1,500 units of various flavors and styles. Yeah. So, and, and for for Joanna who's asking here, where where they sold? Where can people find your waterers? Uh, the cheapest place to find it is on my website, farmerbread.com. Uh, I also sell it on Amazon, but uh, Amazon takes a larger cut, so I have to charge a little bit more on there. Um, and then uh, ruralking.com, and then there is a, the agrarian uh, is a store in Indianapolis that holds uh, that stocks my buckets for their Very customers. Cool. So now, Brad, I know you were messaging me earlier and, and and kind of said you had some questions. What what are your questions like? What are you dealing with today? You need some advice. So I'm I'm still having difficulty sort of organizing my short term projects while keeping in, uh, in mind the long-term projects. So there's been a couple of times where I've gone to a nearby Amish auction and I've gotten a great deal on some items that um, would end up uh, sort of a few years down the road. Um, so like a 450 gallon water tank out by my high tunnel um, and then ram pump. And so just trying to figure out all of these little pieces but then um, put those together without feeling paralyzed. So 
um, like right now I'm trying to gear up for winter. Um, and I, uh, when I came back from Homestead of America, I brought home some quail eggs. Um, cause I, I kind of like the idea of being able to grow, uh, raise meat, uh, in the winter time where I wouldn't normally be able to do that with, uh, the pasture poultry with the meat birds. So yeah, I'm so, trying to. So, play so your issue is that you just have so many things going on. How do you focus on the big things versus the little things like how to prioritize? That's, that's the thing you're sure. Yeah. About. Yeah. And, uh, and um, I, I recently bought one of these because you never know when your ideas are going to hit you and to try to like mark it down. So I got like some, Diagrams of how I'm going to figure out the quail winter water system. Yeah. Um, and that's at least what I'm, I'm trying to do right now. But if you have any tips or suggestions, I'm, so, I'm always. So, so, so one thing I do is and I do this every year and I'm actually just about starting this process. Um, and, and that's after I get done with all my big stuff for the year and like I'm fully into winter mode on the farm, you know, really in the month of like November, December, I start like heavy planning. And really thinking about like, what, what's the farm going to be for next year? What am I going to focus on next year? And, and that's when I start to make a bunch of goals for what I want to try to achieve in, in that next year and, and really try to prioritize it. And my wife and I will sit down and we'll talk about it. And we'll say, yeah, we really want to do this. We, we shouldn't do that. I'd love to try to do this if I can. And what we do is we actually take all the projects we want to do and we rank them. And, and that ranking is really important because – you know, I, th I think if you just try to set like, say, oh, we're only doing four things next year, that might not be the best thing for you. And part of it is like, what's what's the most important thing you can do? What's the least important thing you can do? And you'd love to get through the entire list, but you know, realistically, you're not. And so you start to like say, OK, here's how I'm going to start to schedule the projects. And I, I actually go through the calendar and say, all right, in you know, the months of September and October, we're going to be building this big house for the geese to live in in the winter. And in the month of September, which was actually originally when I was planning on getting them, I was hoping to get the cattle and, you know, okay, by the time I'm through, you know, August, I want to have all my hatching done for the year. And, oh, you know what? I also want to build a new dog house. And like, so I have all these things. And so I schedule the projects out and I have them based on priority. Some things though might not get done. So for example, um, I had a plan to build like a new garage barn here on the farm, but back in March and April when I needed to actually lock in a contract to get the stuff built, labor prices were going crazy. Lumber prices were going crazy. And like, that was what was sort of keeping me from like being able to like act on that. And I gave up on the plan for the year. And I just said, you know what? I'm not even going to try to do that. And I focused my energy and attention on some other things that we were doing around the farm just because I, I knew I couldn't do it. And so I think that that planning process is really important because it helps you focus in on stuff. Sometimes you're going to have opportunistic things come up. Like you got some quail eggs from Homesteaders of America, or you got this giant waterer from a Amish auction. Like, great. Those things are cool. But like, now you need to look at that and look at your priorities and say, does that still match your biggest and most important priorities? Because I think, you know, having those, those big goals helps you from getting distracted by some of the little things that you could easily chase, you know, and, and just sort of like Kelly here is saying, you know, it's eating an elephant. You do it one mm -hmm. bite at a time. And so unless you're able to break those things into smaller parts, it's harder to go for the bigger picture. And then, and then I, I would also say too, like um, when you have opportunities to build infrastructure, maybe overbuild it um, because then it will pay off in the end. So like in November of 2020, I had to replace the three quarter inch poly pipe uh, that froze and, and busted. And uh, so then I replaced it with one inch poly pipe and then ended up adding um, two frost free hydrants. So there's one near the pasture and then there's one really right at the end of my chicken run. Um, that way, if I get in a pinch and my winter water system isn't working, I'm seriously like three feet away from that. So last winter, that was uh, that was really helpful having that in place. So, so Brad, like, what are you hoping to do? Like, what are your big goals? Like long-term, like, what are you hoping to do and see? So, um, I have this pie tunnel that I got with the grant and I, and I grew in it, uh, for the requirement. Um, but the problem that I, that I ended up, I didn't secure a water source. 
a consistent water source. And so what I'd like to do is get, uh, so we have two ponds. We have an upper pond and a lower pond and water flows, there's a spring. So I wanna use that resource with a ramp pump to pump water back up to the high tunnel. And then um, I also want to be able to uh, collect some rainwater, uh, use the rainwater for watering my chickens or livestock, and then using the pond water uh, to irrigate the, uh, the high tunnel. Um, and so right. almost like an aquaponic system without having to deal with the fish. Cool. That that's, that's that sounds like an interesting project, man. So you should definitely tackle it. Yeah. You know, the thing I've been I've been going crazy with the cattle. Like I just threw some footage up just keep this interesting and uh it's been so different like working with them. It's it's such a different scale than like the ducks and geese, um but I'm loving it. Um they're just a lot of fun. Do you have any cattle plans in the future? Well, I do have a uh uh a Jersey uh, heifer calf that I bottled for two months because uh, I, I uh, sold a ram at auction and uh, the only animal that I, I, I jimmy rigged something in the back of my truck to transport it. So I was kind of limited on the size of animal that I could purchase. And I saw her and was like, she was a good deal. So I brought her back and pretty much the main goal with her right now is just she's another grazing animal. Uh, but we might look into getting her bread and, and having milk as an option. But uh, she thinks that she's uh, just one of the sheep um, and she loves our <laughs> livestock guardian dog. And, and uh, yeah, it's, it's been interesting having a larger animal on there. I, I did some farm chores for nearby farm and I was kind of blown away at like how large these animals are. And they, they were really calm. Um, and, but, uh, but yeah, it just really puts into perspective, like if you're used to chickens and, and the smaller animals, and then you get the big animals, it's like, you can have bigger problems, but, uh, it's fun figuring it all out. Yeah, no, I, I think that that's right. So, so Pam Mason's coming back to our earlier topic of project prioritization and how to focus. And, and she brings up a really good point of, do you have time limits or you just keep them until it's done no matter what? And, and I, I think um, in terms of how long to go, it's a, that's a struggle for me, to be honest with you. Like, so, so for example, I'm building this uh, hoop house that is going to be 100 feet long, 20 feet wide, about 12 feet high at its tallest point. Like, so this thing's going to be massive. I can, you know, keep my geese and chickens inside there during the winter, but I can also drive my tractor in there and clear it out for the spring and summer. And, and right. so that was like a project I had planned and I'm building it with my friend, Alfred, but you know, right now we're like hitting some production problems. Some of the tools that we were going to use aren't working quite the way we need to, as we're bending like steel pipe to make this thing. And, and so it's like taking a lot longer than I thought. And so it's a real issue that like, I don't want to give up on it. And so, because it's so important, I'm not setting a time limit for the project. But there are some times where I'll be like, yeah, I only have a, a week that I can give that project and then I have to move on. Um, and and I, so I think sometimes you have to be brutal. But but the real answer, Pam, is I think it, it sort of depends on how important and how far off you feel like you are. What do you, what do you think about that, Brad? Well, um, like I'm, I'm definitely considering like trying to identify sort of those big time crunch projects that uh, I might end up hiring out uh, or at least at least start building that network of people that I could call on and say, hey, do you have a few hours this weekend? Can we try to tackle this? And they learn a skill in the process and then I'm just not doing it by myself. So um, I, I am definitely exploring that to try to optimize the amount of time that I do have. Uh, the other thing too is with winter, it's like a squeeze on both ends. It's like you get less light and it gets colder and things get a little bit more difficult. So that's always fun to deal with. Yeah. Cool. So, Hey, Brad, if folks want to find you, what's your farm name? Where are you? Like, where can they find you? If they're curious. Um, so on, I'm on YouTube. Uh, if you search for farmer, Brad, uh, they'll come up there. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook and, uh, and, um, yeah. So those, those are the places that you'll find me. And my website's farmerbrad.com. And that's where uh, you'll find more information about the automatic chicken water bucket. 
Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining me, Brad. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you. It's great to see you again. All right. Take it easy. All right. That was farmer Brad. <laughs> and uh, Mark Brim was eating some farmer Brad gizzards right now. Um, good for Mark. <laughs> I don't know where you can get farmer Brad uh, gizzards, but that's, that's pretty cool.